I'm here with Shane of Athern. Hi, Shane. Hi, Joe. Welcome. It's great to have you here at the 2013 National Train Show, and we appreciate you stopping by the Athern display. Well, we're really excited. We got it. We are announcing our most requested locomotive, and that is the SDP 45 locomotive. And we actually have samples here to show at the show as well. And there's three different versions. Um, we're going to start out with the Southern Pacific. This is the quintessential locomotive for the SP for passenger service from the late 60s. Of course, they went to Amtrak service when Amtrak came into being in the early 70s and then came back for commuter service on the SP and then ended their lives uh, in freight service down in LA. And for the SP, we did a lot of special details, things like the normal SP full uh, light package on the front of the locomotive, SPL window cab, and then we really went to some specifics on the SDP 45 light. Uh, for the first time ever, we've done icicle breakers, and then that's both nice. front and rear. Uh, we also mounted the bell on the roof. On the steam generator, the SP had a unique detail there, and we've captured that as well. The water fill placement along the walkway is a little bit more forward than the Great Northern, and we did that too. Uh, and then for the first time ever, this hasn't even been done in brass before, we have high-low uh, brake cylinders on the trucks, oh, wow. so that's an all-new feature. Great. The uh, Great Northern, a couple things there. The steam generator is a little bit different than the uh, SP. Of course, it has the beacon and then uh, the 5,000-gallon fuel and water tank as well. And then as we get to the Erie Lackawanna, Erie Lackawanna did things a little bit differently. They wanted their locomotives for freight on the SDP 45, so they wanted the big 5,000-gallon fuel tank so they could pull those hot shot piggyback freights from one end of their system to the other without refueling. So that uh, makes the rear of the locomotive a little bit different. Instead of having a flat end, it actually has a pointed end. And then because of low tunnel clearances, the Erie Lackawanna had to have uh, the roof more of a low profile. So they've got low profile fans, uh, as well as the T-vent, the exhaust stack, the dustbin hatch, and then they create a special bracket for the air horn as well. And we've captured all of those details on the SDP 45. Cool. So what else do you have here? Well, we're pretty excited. You know, Norfolk Southern last year with the Heritage announcement and the uh, 21 locomotives and 11 SD70 Aces, we went to a lot of effort uh, to really recreate the most accurate NS Heritage SD70 Ace on the market. Uh, two of our team members were at Spencer, North Carolina for the unveiling last year and literally shot thousands of photographs, took volumes of notes to make sure we capture every detail of the NS series. Uh, some common things like, the, of course, the PTC array antenna on the roof, uh, but some really unique things that only Athern is doing, things like this particular cabinet actually stands proud out on the walkway on both sides. We've captured that element. There's also a cabinet hatch on this side that was originally a hatch that would have been bolted on. Now it is actually has a pull-off hatch. Um, some other things that we do, there's a unique handrail bend in the step-down on the more later version uh, Aces. We've done that as well. A lot of new pilot details, uh, MU receptacles, things of that nature that only NS has. Uh, for operating in the northeast corridor, they have a LSL indicator light that lights up, uh, and we have captured that on both sides of the locomotive as well. And then it, um, some other things too, like the conduit around the, uh, the uh, radiator fans is new on the later version Ace. And then Very some nice. things too that set us apart. Uh, on the original Ace, you can't see through the dynamic brake, and we've, we've got that. And then the see-through screens to the uh, housing inside as well, uh, with the blower housing. So quite a bit of detail on the ACE to really make sure that folks who want to capture that whole series uh, get the most accurate ACE available. The first four road numbers in the series should be here in September, followed by the remaining seven, probably late October to early November. Very good. Looks like you've got some second generation Jeeps here too. Yeah, this has been uh, one of the projects we've been working on the last couple of years and uh, it's all in a common tooling platform. It's the Jeep 38-2, which is the first locomotive, uh, the GP40-2 and the GP50. And what's really unique here is we've gone to a lot of effort to make these not only road name specific, but road number specific and details that have never been done before in a mass produced plastic locomotive. Things like on the Milwaukee Road, the really short fuel tank that was unique to Milwaukee. Uh, the second one on the Jeep 40-2, this is actually the L version. Uh, the, this was unique to see in. It actually sat up higher uh, off the frame, which means the ditch lights, there's a little bit more space between the, uh, I'm sorry, the sill and the uh, snow plow and uh, that's never been done. And then of course the GP50 with all the details in this particular one with the Santa Fe, things like the air conditioner, the roof conduct, the ground plane antenna, and each railroad will have all of those specific details. All right, well thanks Shane. Hi, oh, you're very welcome, Joe. We appreciate you being here at the show and taking the time to share with your subscribers our new models. Train Masters TV, coming this fall, only from Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine.